ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد the messenger of allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said من لا يسال الله فهو عليه غضبان that the person who doesn't ask allah tabarak wa ta'ala allah is angry with him allah is angry with the person that doesn't make dua person who doesn't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no doubt that from the best times of al-istijaba of having your dua answered by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is while you are in a condition of obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala engaging in an increase in goodness beyond other times and finding al-maskana or dhul finding humility and humbleness within yourself so a person while they are fasting this is from the reasons why his dua is mustajab and the reasons why his dua is accepted and the person while they are fasting the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said thalatha da'watuhum mustajab there are three people da'watuhum the da'wa meaning the dua is mustajab is answered by Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala and from them is the Sa'im is the person who was fasting meaning as the scholars they say why he is fasting and particularly at the time of breaking his fast on a daily basis and particularly at the conclusion of the month of Ramadan the breaking of his fast his dua is mustajab his dua is answered by Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala and for this reason, because of the effect that the humility a person has while they are fasting, and the fact that they have turned towards Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and they have lost interest with this world, and they want what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of reward and protection from his punishment, and the likes of these things that are loved by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. from the heart of his abd, his worshipper and for this reason the dua is more likely to be accepted at that time and we find in the ayat in the verses of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah the statement of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'an fal yastajibu li wa li yu'minu li la'alla when my ibad, when my worshippers, when my slaves ask you about me, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Then I am near. And I am near. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala didn't say فَقُولْ أَنَّهُ قَرِيبٌ So say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَرِيبٌ that indeed Allah is near, then I am near. Meaning that Allah wa ta'ala is closer than that statement. And then tell them that I am near. He just says, I am near. He say, you tell them, Muhammad, Allah is telling you, I am near. Meaning his knowledge and his power, wa ta'ala, then I am near. Ujibu da'wat al-da'i the da'an. Did I respond to the du'as of those who call upon me when they call upon me? فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي So let them respond to me. So let them respond to me. Meaning according to the surah or a lack thereof of al-istijaba. According to the quickness or slowness 
of a person's responding to what Allah has requested from him will be how quickly or slowly Allah Taala may respond to what he requests from Allah according to how fast or slow a person responds to the orders of Allah Taala, and what Allah has required from him will be how quickly or slowly Allah Taala may respond to what the person has requested from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَنْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي They ask you about me and tell them that I, or then without a doubt I am near I answer the dua of those who make dua when they make dua فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي So let them respond to me I respond to the duas of those that call upon me when they call upon me so let them respond to me that's a tremendous statement. So let them respond to me. A clear example of that, one of our Mashaykh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Rabi' ibn Hadi al Madkhali, Sheikh Muhammad, the son of Sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi, he said, commenting upon this verse of what is similar to it, and mentioning how at that time, this was about three years ago, how at that time there was a drought in Saudi Arabia and the people had been making the Salatul Istisqa which is what? Salatul Istisqa was Istisqa Salatul Istisqa is a rain prayer they were making the rain prayer because it was a drought and they had been making the rain prayer for nearly a year and there was a drought for nearly a year but the rain still didn't come the rain still didn't come he said look at the difference between this and the action of the Prophet Sallallahu when the Prophet Sallallahu made the rain prayer and he raised his hands in dua there was not a single cloud in the sky there was not a single cloud in the sky there was a drought a Bedouin came to him and he said Ya Rasulullah, istazqi lana Qad halakat al-mawashi Qad halakat mawashiina O Messenger of Allah Make the rain prayer for us Our flocks have started to perish Our sheep and goats and so on and so forth Our livestock has started to perish and die And so has our vegetation and our crops and so on and so forth So make the istazqa for us the Prophet Sallallahu raised his hands in the istisqa. He went and he made the salat al istisqa. When he raised his hands in the istisqa, there was not a single cloud in the sky. By the time he had lowered his hands, pieces of clouds started to... Imagine the companions witnessing this. Pieces of clouds started to appear on the horizons and they put themselves together into a large cloud over the city of al Madina. And by the time he lowered his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his beard was dripping with water. And it rained for an entire week until the point that the same Bedouins came back to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said that it is raining so violently and severely that we are afraid it's going to kill our animals and kill our crops. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, hawalayna la alayna. Oh Allah, send it around us and not upon us. Send it out to the Utum, to the hills and the valleys and so on and so forth, other places where the rain is needed. The Prophet ﷺ made a dua and the rain departed immediately. When he asked Allah Ta'ala for that. So the Shaykh he said, Look at the difference of our duas being answered and the dua of the Prophet ﷺ being answered. He said, At that time, the people, I had spent some time in. Saudi Arabia in the summer months and I remember throughout the entire summer that I was there that in almost every Salat Jahriya and almost every Salat that I was out loud they were making dua against Bashar al-Assad the disbelieving ruler of Syria who was slaughtering the Muslims wholesale slaughtering the Muslims by the tens of thousands they were making dua in Ramadan in Sha'ban and in Ramadan they were making dua in every salat, after Fajr, after Maghrib, after Isha. 
and many masajid. The Shaykh, he said, but look how Allah wa ta'ala still did not remove the affliction. Why? Because the people were disobedient to Allah. And look how Allah still did not send the rain because the people are disobedient to Allah wa ta'ala. And if this is in the land of Tawheed where the people are upon their religion, better than many of us can ever hope to be. Now what is our condition? So this is something that we recall as we make dua in the month of Ramadan, that we learn as a benefit from the month of Ramadan and we take outside of Ramadan. That if we want Allah to respond to us, we have to respond to Allah. If we want Allah wa ta'ala to answer our call, we have to answer the call of Allah wa ta'ala. هذا ما يتيسر وما يكفي وخير الكلام دق ودل وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. And if you don't have anything to make du'a for, make du'a for me. It's like Allah khair.